you are the, the iconic photographer from the first Ramones album. Uh, how was that session? I'm interested about how you, you build it. Well, the thing was, I'd known the Ramones since 1974. I that was the year I came to New York City. And the, I worked for a magazine called Punk Magazine, and we were going to put the Ramones on the cover on this third issue we did. <laughs> And so we just set up a photo session with Punk Magazine for the Ramones, and we all knew each other. We were friends, we, we saw each other all the time, we lived in the same neighborhood, and of course they were a fantastic band, and I loved their band. So when we did the session, it was very relaxed, and it wasn't, the idea wasn't to be the album cover, it was just to be for the magazine, because they had already hired a professional photographer to shoot the album cover. But when they saw those pictures, they didn't like them at all. So they were in like a panic because the record was coming out in one month and they had no picture. So they were looking at a lot of different photographers' pictures and they came across that one and they said, we really like that and we want to use that one for the cover. Uh, but unfortunately we have no money anymore so we can only give you $125. In the picture they look like a gang. They look like a street fighter almost, but they weren't like that, right? No, they were regular guys, but I think that, that, first of all, the fact it was black and white, there weren't many album covers at that time that were black and white, and then the way they looked, that wasn't really a style of dressing in rock and roll. It was more like a street gang look, like maybe a little James Dean or something, Marlon Brando, something like that. So because they were all dressed in a similar fashion and they wearing the ripped jeans, and so they looked like they could be a gang or, or they could be brothers which was the idea the ramones were the brothers the brothers ramone so everything sort of fit together and and made it the perfect picture and i think it was the best picture ever taken of them and i'm very glad i took it what uh, do you remember about the excitement of those days the cvgv was Uh, starting television, the Ramones, Blondie, uh, the New York Dolls were all hanging around. That place that it looked filthy, that, but now it has become an iconic place. In the beginning, it was very few people. Maybe there in the audience, there might be 20 people in the beginning. When television played, most of the audience were other people in bands that came to see their friends and what they were doing. So it took maybe a couple of years. It wasn't really until about 76. Uh, 75, 76, a couple years into CBGB's that more and more people started to come and then there was a little bit of attention in the press but not much and it built up between like Patti Smith and television started playing on a regular basis, the Ramones were playing, the audience got bigger and bigger, Blondie was playing but then Blondie went uh, more overseas, they went to Europe, they went to uh, Asia, They their manager took them around the world because to give them a lot of experience. And so that's how their fame really built up because they became international even before they became successful. Where the Ramones were definitely a local band playing in New York and then little by little they started touring in America. But unfortunately they couldn't get on the radio. So it was very frustrating because their music seemed very commercial to everybody who liked them. But the radio didn't understand what they were doing so they didn't get any radio play which is the only way really in america to become successful feelings now that the CVGV is becoming a, a, a store where it sold Ramon's t-shirt for 200 bucks um, the whole Bowery scene has changed a lot since those things everything changes in New York and the nature of life is change uh, nightclubs are made to reflect the moment and the, the nightclubs are don't last the, the Cavern Club where the Beatles played you don't go there today Um, Studio 54. It was a per certain time period when that was the perfect place to go at that time. And CBGB's had, you know, a, an early period, then they had more of a hardcore period, then they had, you know, they kept evolving and different types of music were playing there. But it's sort of inevitable that it couldn't still be there forever. It, it's just a changing city, and that was one of the most run-down parts of New York City in the 70s. 
Now it's one of the most luxurious. There are museums, galleries, um, you know, fancy hotels, fancy restaurants. It's it's completely different, night and day. And and so how could CBGBs be in that world? Why did you decide to retire from photographing in, in the 80s? Because you didn't have the access so much anymore. Like when I was taking the pictures, they were pictures of my friends who just happened to be in bands. Well, when the 80s came along, um, Prince wasn't my friend. I liked his music, but he wasn't letting me photograph him because he wasn't my friend. Um, David Bowie, he wasn't hanging out, so I didn't take his picture. So the people I liked were very famous and they were making great music, but I like to be more intimate and, and casual and take the pictures of people, you know, in their real life. 